Hello everyone, welcome to Motor on Beep Beep, my name is Alan and today I'm finding the final resting place of a very beautiful lady called Lindsay De Paul. She's at Hendon Cemetery and Crematorium. She's a very talented lady, great songwriter, singer, composer and artist. I'll show you the place, look, there we go. It's beautifully and blustery today. All the trees are making a, a soothing relaxing noise. Oh look at that branch there, it's nearly come off. So I've been told where the plot is, that way, so let's head in. Lindsay De Paul, uh, she had quite a tough beginning because her father was a very violent man and he used to regularly beat her up and she got to the age of 19 and she suddenly thought I've had enough of this. And one day she turned and fought back. She actually ended up going to the doctor two days later and she was concussed. She was really quite poorly. But she thought, I can't go on like this, I've got to do something. So she was at college. She saved up the money to leave the home and get away from it all. And that was the beginning of her career. She got a little flat where she paid eight pounds a week over an Indian restaurant. And she was a commercial artist in the beginning. She wasn't a songwriter. She had no intention of being a songwriter. But what she was doing, she was right, she was doing album covers, you know, and info sheets and stuff like that. She was doing the, um, just show you the building, look. Let you see. Nice. So the way she, what she intended to be was a successful commercial artist. And she was doing um, record sleeves, 25 pounds ago. And um, she thought that was a lot, basically, you know, she'd, she didn't really intend to, to do any more than that. But um, she tells a story that one day she was um, feeling a bit low and one of her friends said, have you ever been to a spiritualist? So the British Association of Spiritualists offered this woman and she didn't believe in all this sort of thing, you know? She didn't think it was gonna be anything that would impress her. And suddenly this lady said to her, you're gonna change your career. I can see you on TV. I can see you in front of the cameras. So Lindsay De Paul thought, hm, I bet she sort of, you know, kind of says that to everybody. So she didn't take a great deal of notice of it. But little did she know, a little while in the future, it all became true. She, uh, she was classically trained as a musician and she basically wrote a few um, records and then she, because she was doing sleeves for recording artists, uh, she just showed the building up from this side. Sorry to break off there, but look, it's quite nice, isn't it? She was involved with musicians. So she decided that she'd uh, write a few records and they became B-sides. Nothing, nothing too spectacular. Um, and then one day she wrote a record, which was uh, for the group called the Pipkins. Just gonna be quiet because they're having a service down there. I don't wanna make a lot of noise. Um, and she wrote this song and she was gonna give it to the group called the Pipkins. And the Pipkins wrote, this, uh, if you remember, give me that, give me that, give me, give me, give me that, give me that thing. That one, they wrote that one. Um, it was intended for them. But this producer said to her, why don't you do it? You could be the uh, artist. Bing, she suddenly, you know, hadn't thought of that before. So she decided to have a go. So they got an old piano, an old bass, a tea chest, and, because they've got no money for drums. And she produced a single. And the single was called Storm in a Teacup. Well, Actually, it wasn't a storm, it was the beginning of a new, a new career for her, really. So, there comes Lindsay De Paul, the recording artist. Her first really big hit was called Sugar Me, and it was written for Peter Noon, if you remember Peter Noon and Herman's Hermits. But um, she decided to release it. Big success, it got to number five all over Europe and to number one in the UK, if you remember Sugar Me. 
think I'm in the right area now anyway. This is the right quadrant, if you know what I mean. Um, she wrote songs for many, many artists. And uh, there are too many to mention here at the moment. But she was a very, very prolific songwriter. I think the songs that most people remember are um, Sugar Me, 1972. Um, then Won't Somebody Dance With Me, 1973. That had the DJ, Ed Stewart. Ed Stewpot Stewart, I think they call him. He did the voiceover at the end of that. And then, of course, Rock Bottom for the Eurovision Song Contest, 1977. I don't think it came Rock Bottom, but um, and I, was, I was surprised how beautiful she was. Very attractive. Very small. Uh, I mean, I'm six foot one and I kind of towered over, you know, but very uh, petite, that's the word, isn't it? But when you look at the people she's been out with, I think I wasn't the only one that thought she was attractive. She was Takanuzu. She went to a charity event and she, Prince Charles saw her and he was smitten. <laughs> and then she went out with uh, Dudley Moore, uh, Chas Chandler, Roy Wood, Ringo Starr, James Coburn for quite a long time, Bill Kenwright, George Best, Bernie Taupin, David Frost. So there we go. They were all sort of overwhelmed by her beauty. She was, she was very nice. She was a nice person as well when you watch her on the interviews. Very modest. Very down to earth. You know, no airs and graces at all. Lindsay Mockton Rubine was born to Meta and Herbert Rubine, a property developer. They were a Jewish family with a Dutch, Australian and German background. De Paul claimed that she and her brother suffered physical abuse at the hands of their father. She was the first woman to be awarded the Ivo Novello Award for her ballad Won't Somebody Dance With Me, another UK Top 20 hit. The BBC Radio 1 disc jockey Ed Stewart spoke the words May I Have the Pleasure of This Dance near the end of the recording. He often played the recording on his Junior Choice programme on Saturday mornings. Although Tony Blackman said it was when she appeared on the BBC television, Top of the Pops. De Paul recorded the female lyric to Mark the Hoople's hit, Roll Away the Stone, but did not perform the song with the band when they were promoting the single. In 1973, Mick Ralphs left Mark the Hoople. His replacement, Luther Grovesner, was contractually obliged to change his name. De Paul suggested Ariel Bender. After appointing Don Arden her new manager, De Paul released Oh I Do, which hit the charts in the UK, Netherlands and Japan. A second Ivor Novella Award followed a year later for No Honestly, which was also the theme tune of a hit ITV comedy of the same name, and provided her with another UK top 10 hit, peaking at number 7. A prolific songwriter, De Paul continued to write songs for a wide range of recording artists, as well as composing theme music to the 1970s documentary television programme Pilger for ATV. In the five year period from 1972 to 1977, she wrote a total of 14 UK single chart hits, most notably Dancing on a Saturday Night, which was a hit for co writer Barry Blue as well as Flash Cadillac and Bond. De Paul's songs have reached the charts of many territories, including the USA, Japan, Germany, the Netherlands, France, Switzerland, Belgium, Austria, Sweden, Canada and Australia. OK, I've seen it, I've seen it. Well, put it this way, if it's not the right one, it's going to be funny because it's got a piano on the grave. Look a bit stupid if it in, but I think it is. Look, well, well, spin it round. I want you to... Go in with me. There we are. Yeah, it is, yeah. There we go. Very simple, actually, isn't it? Lindsay DePaul, singer and songwriter. 1st of October 2014, is 66. There we go. Well, Lindsay, thank you ever so much for all the great music. And what a beautiful lady you are. Inside and out. Yeah, I don't think that piano is part of it actually. I think it, somebody's put that there. Yeah, they have, look, they have. She died of a brain hemorrhage um, very quickly. Uh, she went to the Burnett 
general hospital and by the time she got there they, they announced she was dead so quite tragic really far too young wasn't it thank you Lindsay there we go a very beautiful positive productive lady there very good very good life really it's a shame it ended so so young and it's a gorgeous day so I hope wherever you are whatever you're doing when you're watching this I hope you're having a great day too and don't forget subscribe and ding that bell if you want to see the future ones it's free and of course the thumbs up and the comment I do love the comments I like to see everybody and we can all get to know each other and uh, have some fun and remember these people from the past that we were part of our lives really weren't they I do like this somebody said I talked to the grey but I do it because um, you know it's like I feel I know them from the past and I want to send my my wishes on and I want you lot that are watching that are not here I want you to be able to do it too so it's a joy it really is it really is a joy gorgeous place as well anyway look everyone I won't go on take it easy and I hope to see you all soon bye from me Alan at Motor and Beep Beep bye <laughs>